Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. My father's daughter, four, went into foster care in July-August after my father and her mother, my aunt, died. I, 18 male, along with my siblings, 20 female, 22 male, and 23 female, did not have a relationship with either of them after we learned they started an affair while our mom was undergoing cancer treatment. She discovered the betrayal halfway through her treatment, and she filed for divorce while she was going through so much. She also disowned her sister and told her she never wanted to see or hear from her again. None of us met their daughter, but when our father and aunt passed away this past summer, we were contacted twice. Once to inform us of the death that happened in another state, and a second time to hear their child was in foster care and questioning if any of the family would take her. We all said no. None of us wanted to establish contact or a relationship with her. Early December, my oldest sister and I both got messages on Facebook from someone claiming to be fostering our father's daughter. She said she and her husband wanted to try and facilitate contact between her and her biological relatives, but that they also wanted her to hear stories about her parents. My sister responded, and I ignored the message. All she said was, thanks for thinking of us, but we weren't interested, and we had no contact with our father or aunt prior to death due to a difficult family situation, and she would appreciate if they would respect that and leave us alone. She was polite in her rejection, but also clear. She got three more messages until she blocked them. Then I got two. Our other two siblings don't have social media, so we're harder to reach. But the last one I got basically said that we were all monsters, and we could at the very least look beyond a difficult family dynamic and give their child some nice stories and memories and feelings about the parents she won't remember. That she's innocent and deserves that connection. I was tired of the pushy nature of the messages at that point, and I responded that they can't force me and my siblings to play pretend and act like we have good things to say about either parent, and would they really want her to grow up hearing how much her parents are despised? She responded back that I did not have to be so rude and did not have to take this out on her. She said they were trying to look out for their foster daughter like they do for all their foster kids. Am I the a-hole? OP may be blood related, but they are total strangers with nothing nice to say about the child's parents. Of course the child is innocent in all of this, but again, they are strangers and it's OP's choice to have or not have contact with her. Of course the child will be hurt, but OP was hurt and is still hurting as well, and her half-sister would just be the reminder of that hurt, so OP has the right to choose what is better for her and avoid that constant reminder and salt in her wounds. Also, the foster parents were being rude by being pushy. It was fine that they reached out the first time, but once they got their answer from OP and her sister, they should have moved on. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Baylemy says, I'm going to go with not the a-hole. The foster parents are definitely the a-hole for being so pushy. I don't really see this as you taking this out on your sibling. It sounds like she was never in your life. You never met this kid. Family doesn't end in blood, but it also doesn't start with blood. Just because you share a blood relation to this girl doesn't mean you're her real family. It would be different if you had met this girl, if you were in her life prior to discovering the affair, her parents' death, and then you cut her out. But it sounds like from her birth, you all never considered her family. It's horribly sad, and I feel awful for that little girl. But at the end of the day, she isn't your responsibility, and you don't even know her, and she doesn't know you. The foster parents shouldn't have pushed. They should have read your sister's first message and respected that your family didn't want any contact. OK Weather 1267 says, Not the a-hole. Foster mom didn't listen when you set the boundaries you and your siblings could live with and continued pressuring her case in spite of that. What was rude was continuing to pressure you guys when your sister politely explained. I'm sure everyone feels bad for the young girl, but the Sibs didn't create the situation, nor should they have to engage with the living proof of their father's betrayal and make nice. No, it's not her fault, but guess what? It isn't the siblings' fault either. Cathay says, This is a tough call. I'm going to say not the a-hole, but in the same breath, I'm also going to say you really could take the high road here. Hell, you could even take the medium road and improve the situation. I get that the situation sucks from your perspective and would never urge you to reconcile with your dead father or aunt. But if I have the relationship right, this four-year-old is both a half-sibling and cousin, 
which makes her awfully close, biologically speaking, to a full sibling. Add to that that none of this is her fault or her doing. The foster parents aren't the least bit wrong in saying she's an innocent. Edited to add, the kid is not just innocent of her parents' a-holery, but also not culpable for the foster parents' pushy and rude behavior. Life is so hard, for everyone. Kindness and compassion aren't always easy, but they are usually free. The practice of kindness and compassion is never wasted, and also, you will be the primary beneficiary of whatever kindness you give to the world in the time you've got here. My fiancé has two kids, 17 and 21. We've been together two and a half years. Their mother has 100% care and is high conflict. She had an affair six years ago and is still with the affair boyfriend. Things were fine between her and my fiancé until I came along, and she acts like we had the affair and broke up her family. She didn't hang out with my fiancé's father and stepmother either after the separation, until I came along, and she would say negative things about me to them. Anyway, the last two years we have spent Christmas lunch with my fiancé's father and stepmother and extended family. The lounge room is covered in photos with all the family members, and some are of my husband and his ex. These don't worry me, as there are so many photos that none stand out. However, in the dining room, there is only one big photo, and it's a family photo of my fiancé, his ex, and their children. No other photos are on the wall, so this one stands out. So I'm having lunch with my fiancé and trying to bond with his family, and I have this big photo of my fiancé and his ex-wife staring back at me. It's a little hard. I tried to explain this to my fiancé, and he doesn't acknowledge my feelings or how it could be difficult for me, and bluntly says that the photo is of their grandchildren, so they won't take it down. And it's been there for 15 years, so it's my problem, more or less. I think their relationship is over. They're divorced and both have repartnered. And I think the right thing to do is that his father and stepmother move that photo to a less prominent place in the house. Do you think I'm too sensitive about the photos and overreacting? On top of this, my fiancé's stepmother told three different stories about his ex-wife on Christmas Day. One was how the ex-wife won $200,000 on a scratchy when they were still married. The other was how they had to take her some lunch one Christmas as she was working, police officer, and I forget the other story. I told my fiancé that these stories are hard for me to hear on Christmas Day. His response is, well, that's just who she is. Don't listen to her. So pretty much says I just have to keep putting up with it. What are your thoughts about this? I'm honestly confused. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to be an easy relationship, so if OP doesn't want drama and headache, she should leave now. I think it's disrespectful talking about OP's fiancé's ex so much in front of OP, and it's clear what kind of message OP's fiancé's stepmother is sending. Looks like OP will always be compared and in the shadows of the ex, and it doesn't look like the fiancé is there to stand up for OP and end that. So, yeah. Lots of headache if OP doesn't leave. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Fawning and Conning says, I think you should distance yourself a bit from his parents. It's pretty clear his parents still like her more than you and don't have much interest in getting to know you, nor does your fiancé have interest in changing her mind. TCRHS says, You're too sensitive and overreacting about the photos. Grandparents cherish photos of their grandchildren. If you asked for them to be moved, you'd look jealous and insecure. Your fiancé should ask his mom to stop talking about his ex-wife at holidays. That's not an unreasonable request. Me, 30 female, and my husband got married when we were 25 after 6 years. He passed away in an accident in April. A few weeks before the accident, I found out that he had a one-night stand with a woman who he works with. When he died, I hadn't decided yet what was going to happen in our relationship. We entered counseling and were still living together, but obviously it was hectic. As I wasn't sure if we were going to divorce, I decided not to tell our families and only confided in a few close friends and my therapist. I didn't want opinions from everyone. I also didn't tell his family when he died. There was no reason to. A few weeks ago, the affair partner reached out to me. She's five months pregnant and preparing to raise the baby. She wanted me to tell his family because she wants her child to have a relationship with his family and be connected to his culture. I said I wouldn't do this and simply passed along their contact information. Crap hit the fan. I'm close with his brothers, and I thought that they were going to raise him from the dead and K him again. Apologies for the dark humor. They're coming around to the idea of having a relationship with the baby, but I do not want to, nor has the mother offered, which is fine. 
The mother's gotten back in touch with me to ask for some of my husband's possessions. She wants his clothes, his books, his record collection, and, bizarrely, his wedding ring, for the baby to feel connected to its father. I've made it very clear to her that I will be giving her nothing of the sort. His parents and brother have some of his stuff, and she can access things like that through them. She kept pushing, and I lost my temper, and called her an outrageous bee who should find some shame. I wouldn't be opposed to passing some of the stuff along to the child via my in-laws when they're older, and can appreciate it. Not the wedding ring, which was the worst request in my opinion, but other sentimental stuff. I've also retained a lawyer to look into whether I owe the child any money legally from my husband's passing. If I don't, I may set up a trust fund for them when they're an adult with his money, because I really don't need it and that seems fair. I just do not want to give this woman all I have left of my husband. I really do not trust her with any of it. Obviously, she thinks I'm a bitter raging monster bee and an a-hole, and my in-laws are divided. My in-laws are largely supportive, but some think that I need to give some of his stuff to her and the baby. Some of his brothers have told me that they're sympathetic, but that I'm behaving like an a-hole and a baby by not cooperating for the sake of the child. I'm unsure whether the complicated grief is clouding my judgment. Edited to add, My in-laws are getting a paternity test when the baby is born. This was the first thing they asked. However, the scans and due date line up perfectly when the affair occurred, so I think it is more than likely true, so we're preparing for this. His wedding ring? She wants to give her child their father's wedding ring? From his marriage to the wife he cheated on to conceive said child? Well, this woman has no shame. OP doesn't owe her any sentimental objects. The child, however, may be entitled to a portion of the inheritance, if the mother can prove paternity. This child hasn't even been born yet, and she's trying to claw what little OP has left of his memory from OP. I'm sure a lawyer will advise OP correctly, and now let's hear the community's opinion. No Barracuda 3622 says, Not the a-hole. If she wants to get the possessions of her partner after they die, she should consider getting married instead of being the other woman. There's nothing bitter about what you're doing. She just doesn't know how life or the law works. Edit. It's not your job to have any sort of relationship with the child, and I also don't get why you'd need to set up a trust fund for the baby. Seems like you're willing to do more than you need to. Also, what exactly does your husband have that a baby would even want? Driver picks the tune, says. Not the a-hole. His wedding ring? Five bucks and my left toe says that's so she can spin the tale that they were married and he isn't an affair baby. Absolutely not. That's bonkers. Stray's mom says. Not the a-hole. Your deceased husband's side piece wants you to give her your husband's stuff? Oh, hell no. You are not obligated to give her a damn thing, nor do you have any kind of monetary obligation towards her or the baby, since she was the side piece and not his wife. That person would be you. Why would you even consider setting up a trust fund for a homewrecker's kid? Yeah, yeah, the baby is innocent, but the mom isn't. That would just give her leverage to demand more, which she doesn't deserve. Edited to add. Can she prove her baby is your husband's by paternity test? Any of his male relatives should be able to help with that. Not that it would negate anything I stated above. You still don't owe her a damn thing. I, 26 male, lost my wife, Annie, over a year ago when our two children were only 18 months and four years old. She was only 25. I lost my own mom when I was five, so I've been where my children are and my heart aches for them, as well as for myself and for Annie, who so desperately wanted to be here for our kids. She lost her own dad when she was six, so the reality of history repeating hit her incredibly hard before the end. I vowed to her, to myself, and to our children that I would not make the same mistakes my dad and her mom made in the aftermath. I mostly estranged from my dad, but after Annie died, he reached out to tell me he hoped I understood him better and cut him some slack for everything. I didn't respond to him at the time because I was in the most immediate sense of grief still. Today it's still raw, but I'm in therapy to try to find peace in my life. He reached out to me a few more times and he apologized for his initial message. We met up a few days ago per his request. Once he realized I still wear my wedding ring and once he realized I was still grieving, he tried to tell me I needed to move on and start looking for love again. This led to tension in the meeting and I told him to drop it or else which is when he started saying he would hope I would see why he remarried so fast after my mom died and why he was so happy with his second wife and why he felt I needed a mother like he was so sure I felt my kids needed. Saying I hated him for being happier and loving his second wife more, 
But I should understand better now. I should understand that life has to move on, and wanting to embrace a new person fully is not a bad thing. I'm a widowered parent, and that should have opened my eyes and made me regret hating him for so long. I told him it didn't work that way, that it only made me judge his actions more harshly. He was stunned to hear this. He asked me how I was ever going to find someone else to love me and the kids if I'm hung up on Annie, and I told him Annie was the love of my life. I told him my children are the other two loves of my life, but in a different way to Annie. It's my job to give them safety, security, love, and the best life I can make happen. I told him I would never look my young children in the eye and tell them their mother is dead and they need to get over it and accept a new mother. I will never yell at my children for crying for their mother because it makes the new spouse unhappy. I told him I'm not looking to give them a new mother. I'm looking to give them the best version of the dad they have and the best out of this crappy life we have been given. I told him I will never rub it in their faces the way he did to me, that I love someone else way more than I ever loved their mom. I told him I understand grieving and needing to focus on yourself, but not hurting your children to try to erase the parent they love. He called me an a-hole and I left. And I wondered since if I was too harsh. Am I the a-hole? Clara Mistral says, Not the a-hole. Your father's remarriage and subsequent treatment of you were hurtful, and his recent comments about you moving on and finding love again were insensitive. It's natural for people to grieve and heal at their own pace, and no one should dictate how or when you should move on from your loss. Your dedication to providing a loving and supportive environment for your children is admirable, especially considering the challenges you faced. Prioritizing their emotional needs and preserving the memory of their mother is crucial for their well-being and emotional growth. While your words may have been harsh, they came from a place of deep pain and frustration. You had every right to stand up for yourself and your children. Your commitment to your family and to Annie's memory is a testament to the depth of your love and compassion. 1962 Michael says, Not the a-hole. To be clear, your dad is the a-hole for what he did in the last year. He should definitely have allowed you to grieve in your own way and decide on your own whether and when to allow for the possibility of another love. There's an old saying that women grieve, men replace. It obviously does not apply to you, but it does apply to your dad and many men of his generation and before. It may be that he never loved your mother as much as you love Annie. He's not an a-hole just because he remarried someone else or even to love her more or be happier with her than he was with your mother. But he is certainly an a-hole for pointing it out to you and suggesting you do things the way he did. I was divorced, not widowed. My two older kids made it pretty clear they weren't interested in being part of a blended family once I eventually remarried. My youngest was all about it for his own reasons. I think the important thing is to allow the kids to have whatever relationship they want to have with any eventual step-parents and not try to manufacture a Brady Bunch scenario.